We got games launching and TV to talk about. Let's talk. What up, viewers? What up, what up? Calc Soups here, and today is Friday, February 18th, and that means it's time for a quick recap of the week in video game news. We got two big games launching this week, so let's jump right in. Uh, the first big one is the follow-up to 2018's Horizon Zero Dawn. Horizon Forbidden West launched this week, uh, launching yesterday. Um, it's doing pretty good uh, at a 88 Metacritic, which is just one point down from where it was uh, for Horizon Zero Dawn, so the game is just exactly where it was last time. Um, I feel a little bad because Horizon game, <laughs> I guess I can say this, I guess I can say Horizon games, uh, even though there's only been two, uh, always come out in like a congested window. Um, so I always end up putting these on the back burner and I still haven't even played the first one, but um, I'm currently playing through Pokemon Arceus, uh, Total War, Warhammer 3. I've still got Dying Light to play because I'm really excited for that game. Um, so I know that these are great games, um, but these just inevitably fall to the back burner. Uh, just like the last one, I'm pretty sure I know why I didn't play the last one, and that's because uh, Breath of the Wild came out, and uh, as the greatest game of all time, I had to play that and, and purchase my Switch and wait in line outside of a Best Buy, but I digress. Um, the game it looks to be great, looks to be an awesome game, open world, ex you know, really expanding on what they did in the first one, um, and so... While I don't quite know the story, I'm looking forward to kind of those unraveling, and hopefully I can get a two-pack bundle sometime soon um, and really sit down and play those games because I'm I think they're really great games, and I and I know people are are super fans of them, um, so I'm excited to play them. I'm excited to play on my PlayStation Five with all of the DualSense uh, interactions that are there. But um, yeah, I I just this one is uh, it's falling to the back burner, proving that February is a very congested month. Um, so, uh, I would say I'm looking forward to playing this, but that is not happening anytime soon, so I will let you know when I play that, but, um, wow, I got a lot to, uh, to unpack and even more games launching, so that's a great segue into also another game launching this week, and a game that I will be playing, uh, Total War Warhammer 3, so this is the third installment of the Total War Warhammer series, um, I've been following these for quite some time. I was never a really big Total War fan, um, but as soon as they did Warhammer, I read all the reviews about the games, you know, one and two. Uh, they have all of my favorite races. I used to play the tabletop uh, battle game, strategy game, so a uh, really big fan of Warhammer in general. You know I'm a big fan of Games Workshop, um, but uh, this is my first time jumping into it, so I'm really excited to see what they're doing with the Chaos Gods, what they're going to do with the Bitter North. Um, the game is also at an 88 Metacritic, so it's also reviewing really well. Um, I don't know how that compares to the previous games, but I'm very excited for this one. Um, it is launching on both Steam and PC Game Pass, which I was hoping to play it on PC Game Pass, but my friends are playing it on Steam, so I had to buy it on Steam. Um, I've already started the first like 90 minutes or so of the prologue, which feel very World, uh, Warcraft 3 to me. Uh, you start in the Bitter North, and there's this evil sword, and you're being led by this mysterious voice. So that's why I wore my, my uh, Dangerous to Go Alone shirt, because uh, I really got uh, Warcraft 3 vibes from it. But uh, I'm looking forward to playing more, playing a campaign. Apparently the campaign can play uh, more than two this time. I can play, I think it plays up to eight, so... Uh, I'm looking forward to jumping into a campaign and playing through that with my friends. So check that out uh, on my stream every Friday where I'll be playing that. Um, so looking forward to playing Total War Warhammer 3. Cyberpunk, the game that only ever worked on next-gen consoles, now has a next-gen update. Um, so for those of you who aren't in the know, a little bit of inside baseball. Um, the version of Cyberpunk you've been playing since launch has been the PS4 or Xbox One base version of the game. Um, so in the latest 1.5 update, uh, this is the PlayStation 5 update, the Xbox Series X update. So uh, you will finally be able to use the console's full potential. It's also coming with a lot of quality of life improvements and, uh, and stuff like that. There's even, uh, you can build out your apartment and really customize it. A lot of character customization is being improved and fixed and just a whole slew of bugs are being worked on. So 
Um, I think this was originally promised like summer of 2021, so you can see how delayed it has been, but the Cyberpunk next gen update is here. I'll have to uh, see if I still have space on my consoles for Cyberpunk, because uh, I know remember it being a pretty big game, um, and I'm looking forward to kind of, I don't know that I'm willing to play it again. Maybe I am. Maybe this is kind of the time where I would jump in and play like a different playthrough. Um, even though I've already reviewed it with my friends on the Friend Zone back in uh, the first episode of Friend Zone back in January of 2021. So, um, but I'm looking forward to kind of playing through that. I've forgotten a little bit of the story now. So, uh, it, this could be a good time for me to jump in. But like I said, February is pretty congested. So, I'll have to look for time later this year. Um, oh my god, I am so excited. We were talking about, uh, in my cold open, I was talking about TV and movies um, and games-related TVs and movies, and I'm very excited um, that middle of the way through the week, Netflix uh, got the rights to, to make a Bioshock movie. Um, woo! This should be fun. I am really excited for this. Um, I am, Bioshock is my favorite game of all time, um, so I'm really excited to see what they do. Um, I just have one thing to say. Uh, would you kindly not screw it up? Uh, that is, <clears throat> um, I know that Netflix um, Netflix has done a pretty good job with Castlevania and other video game IPs. I think Cuphead just launched this week as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what that's all about. Um, but I hope that they can do it justice uh, with the Bioshock, with the Bioshock movie. Uh, should be fun. It'll be straight onto a streaming service near you. So looking forward to seeing uh, you know, as as this has just started, I'm not expecting to see anything in the next couple years, but hopefully this one gets all the way, jump, jumps through all the hoops that it needs to to get to full production, um, and we get a Bioshock movie in the next couple years. Should be exciting. <clears throat> Dune Spice Wars, the 4X RTS Dune game that uh, we've been talking about since uh, the Game Awards last year, um, got a gameplay reveal this week, uh, so I'll have a trailer down below for that. Um, it really showed off kind of the RTS side of it, where you'll be base building, you know, um, it's a little, it's not a, quite as base building as a true RTS. Uh, that's why I think it leans a little bit more on the 4X side, uh, where you'll be kind of like upgrading your towns very, uh, not very substantially, um, and then kind of bringing your armies around to kind of fight civilization style. Um, they showed a little bit of what the politics will be like, so uh, as you would expect with any Dune IP related video or game or RPG, um, there's a lot of politics in the game and you'll have to interact with those just like you would expect in a civilization game. So uh, I'm very much looking forward to Dune Spice Wars. Um, the fact that they're showing kind of the gameplay trailer, I'm, I'm hopeful that this means that the game is coming out um, sometime this year. I don't know that that's been promised or anything like that, but I'm very much looking forward to seeing more on Dune Spice Wars. In the ever-present Consolidation Wars, um, this one not quite as big as Microsoft buying Activision, but uh, Daedalic, the company that is made uh, making the Gollum uh, Lord of the Rings uh, game, uh, has been bought by Nacon, the uh, French publisher. Uh, I had to look up I recognize the name, but I had to look up a couple of their games. Uh, the ones that floated to the top for me were Warhammer Chaos Bane, uh, Werewolf the Apocalypse Earthblood, that's a mouthful, and uh, Vampire the Masquerade Shadow Song. So it seems like they have access to Games Workshop IP, it seems like they have access to White Wolf and the Vampire the Masquerade IP, um, and now they have access to the Lord of the Rings IP. So uh, all of this was for $60 million. So. Uh, you know, a drop in the bucket compared, again, to Microsoft and Activision. But um, you can just see more and more consolidation. Um, any indie studio can be bought um, basically at any time. Uh, I I think most of that $60 million is just to get access to the Lord of the Rings game, the Lord of the Rings IP. I don't know if the Daedalic's um, licensing agreement is only for the Gollum game or if they can continue to make Lord of the Rings games after that. So... Uh, I'll have to we'll have to see what what's up with that, but I think if they do have access to license more Lord of the Rings properties, I would assume Nacon wants to uh, take their business model and build into some more uh, IPs like the Lord of the Rings IP. Um, something tied to the uh, TV show would be uh, pretty cool uh, in my mind, but uh, definitely a little soon to be talking about that kind of stuff. So 
uh, I'm looking for. I'm still looking forward to the Golem game, um, and now it'll just be published under Nacon. So another game of theirs that I will play. Uh, also, speaking of Horizon, there was a Horizon Lego set that launched this. Or sorry, didn't launch this week, but we got information on this week. Uh, the tall neck, the uh, metal giraffe dinosaurs that are kind of the um, that are kind of the towers in the Horizon games um, got their own Lego set. So it's over twelve hundred pieces, and it's just ninety dollars, which I thought was uh, I I don't I don't remember back from my days of working with Lego what the brick to dollar uh, ratio was, but uh, this seems a pretty low and pretty good deal for that. Um, the fact that Lego is kind of spreading into other gaming IPs, including Horizon, including Mario, uh, gives me a little bit of hope that we'll get that Breath of the Wild one that was kind of uh, submitted, I think, last year at some point. Um, so I'm looking forward to kind of seeing more of what they do. Um, like I said, I haven't played any of the Horizon games, but uh, the Tall Neck Lego would be would shit will be, would sit pretty well on uh, on my shelf. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more gaming IP coming to Lego sets as well as um, seeing what else they bring out for Horizon, because I assume uh, lots of mech dinosaurs would sell really well in LEGO sets. So looking forward to that. Um, caught wind of a pretty cool um, little dongle this week. It's a 4K upscaler for your Switch. Um, so the Marseille M scaler or something like that. Um, actually, I can get the exact name of the product. It is the yeah Marseille M Classic plug and play graphics card. Um, so this is a a little dongle that fits into your HDMI port of your Switch um, or um, or any other uh, gaming like low res retro gaming device, um, and it upscales it to 4K, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, something I a piece of technology that I've never heard of before. But um, the reason I caught it this week is that it was on sale. Rather than being $100, it was down to $80. Um, but yeah, it just plugs straight into your HDMI port. Um, and then you plug your, HD, your regular HDMI cable from there. Um, and it needs a little bit of power, so there's a USB-C uh, with it, I think. And uh, yeah, you can upscale your, your Switch or your retro gaming console, any of your um, minis. Um, so those are all really cool. Um, I, I think they're all sold out in the article I have posted down below, but... Uh, I would love to get my hands on one, even at full price, even at hundred dollars. Uh, playing Breath of the Wild and with a 4K upscaler uh, would be quite would be quite cool. So uh, I'll have to check that out and let me know if you've gotten one and what you think of it down below. Um, in a bid to ever ever expand the horror pantheon into their game, uh, Dead by Daylight is, has a uh, has a Ringu update coming in uh, March uh, on March eighth. So they are adding uh, Sekiro, the uh, the girl from Ring, as well as another uh, survivor, also from the Ring, um, and uh, they are adding it. You know, adding more and more, um, adding more and more horror characters to Dead by Daylight. So they already have Freddy and Jason and uh, Michael Myers. So and uh, I think a couple others. So um, they continue to add more and more, and so it's pretty exciting to see. Uh, you know the ring being added to uh, Dead by Daylight. I always love. I was a big proponent of Dead by Daylight back in I think when it launched in 2016, um, and I always enjoy um, hopping onto that and playing that with my friends as well. So uh, good to see that they continually add content um, and they're continually adding more and more horror icons that you and I know and love. Last but not least, also in TV and gaming news, uh, Amazon is working on two TV series, one based on the Life is Strange series um, from Don't Nod and one based on Disco Elysium. So uh, both of those should be quite interesting uh, with different vibes, obviously, but um, I don't know if these will be animated or live action. Uh, I didn't read through the entire article, but um, it's exciting to see more and more gaming IP uh, kind of getting out there as we've seen successes like we said with I mean now following Arcane, uh, following uh, Castlevania, um, lots of really good video game IPs are currently coming to streaming services um, and so licensing those out to make TV series or movies um, I think is a really good move um, and I'm looking forward to kind of seeing uh, what and speaking of the Uncharted movie launch this week 
Um, so I, I hear that that's already doing well in the box office. So um, good to see more gaming IP hitting um, services and movie theaters near us uh, or streaming services and movie theaters near us. But um, yeah, I'm really excited to kind of see what's going on with uh, different games that are uh, are getting TV adaptations. I think Walter Goggins also got added to the uh, Fallout TV shows. He's going to play a ghoul. So uh, that was that was pretty fun to hear as well. But uh, I'm excited for Life is Strange. The one thing they have to get right is that indie soundtrack. Um, and Disco Elysium is just crazy enough to um, to work in a live action setting. I could definitely see a lot of people not quite understanding it, um, but uh, it it would be quite a ride to uh, tr quite a ride to go through. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what Amazon does with that. Woo! That's it for this week. That is quite a lot, but if you think I forgot anything, feel free to leave a comment down below, and we can always talk video game news down there. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this content. If you do, follow, like, and subscribe to me on YouTube and Twitch so you can see more great content like this. I'll have links down below in the description. Thanks again. I hope you have a super day. I hope you have a super weekend, and I hope you have a super day. Bye!